Well, hey, good morning, everybody. Jen Cravasi here from Jekyll Bates, and today I'm going to show you guys how I repaint a Whopper Plopper. It's one of the biggest questions that I get, right from do I cover the eyes, do I take the eyes out, how do you deal with the moving parts. So we're going to take you step by step on how I do a Whopper Plopper. Obviously, the first part is taking off these hooks. So we'll give you an example. Make sure you have split ring pliers. And you're just going to do this. You don't have to take both off. You can take them off at the same time. Take the hook off with the split ring. It's a lot easier to put back on later. Looks just like that. Then repeat it with this back one. Now this is the actual river to sea, Robert Ploppers. I use a lot of blanks that I get from overseas uh, and quite a bit of my stuff, but there are a few baits that come in blanks that just don't swim the same way as the originals, and this is one of those baits. Um, it's probably a whole lot easier to do a brand new blank for the plopper knockoffs, but again, it just it doesn't swim right, doesn't swim the same. Okay, we have now removed all the hooks from all 15 110 Whopper Ploppers. You'll notice they're all the same color. So there's a reason for that. I ask my clients to give me powder. This is the powder color. Comes just like this from River to Sea. Um, color number is 21 powder. All right, we have just removed the last hook off the last Whopper Plopper. We have 15 total. Now you can see that they're all the same color. This is number 21. This is the powder color from River to Sea. This is the 110. And the powder color, it's already primed for you, so it makes a very easy bait to repaint over. Uh, if you guys want to take a, a closer look, this is the color. Number 21 powder. So next up, we're going to get our trusty painter's tape out. We're going to do a couple of things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to break this into a couple of little pieces and we're going to put it over the eyes. I do not pull the eyes off, I just tape over the eyes. It's so much easier that way. So go ahead and do that. That's the first step. And make sure you get a pretty good seal over there. And then I don't have much of a fingernail, um, but what little I do, unfortunately, airbrushing is not conducive to growing your nails because there's always airbrush paint. And I, it's just a pain in the butt to work with gloves on all the time, even the latex or the neoprene gloves. But as you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm carving out that indentation with my thumbnail. And that's also going to help keep that seal around the eye. Okay, so it's going to look just like that. Now the next thing you're going to do is grab, I like an X-Acto knife. Always make sure you're using a sharp blade. Um, I usually change my blades out about every week. But of course, I'm doing... I'm doing fairly high volume and productivity. It's not just one or two baits every couple of weeks. Um, I average between 20 and 30 baits sometimes every day. So I'm looking at it more from a quality and production standpoint than everything else. But you can see that the divots that I made with my fingernail, I am now going back and getting that squared away with this X-Acto knife. I do both sides before I pull that tape off. There we go. And just make sure that you get the tape cut all the way around this eye. Go ahead and pull that off. And you're left with a nice little cover over top of the original River to Sea eyes. 
on both sides. And you can just work that if there's a little excess on either side. And again, like I said, it does not have to be perfect. All right, now we've got the eyes covered. Now it's time to take care of this tail. Okay, for the next part, we're going to mask off the tail. I do not paint the tails, which is another reason that I prefer to get this particular color. And you, you can. I have before. Um, I just normally, if it's a clear tail, we're going to keep it clear. All right, the last piece that we're going to do is this tail, and that's what's going to keep it together because this will freely spin unless you hold it in place. And what I like to do for that is go ahead and line this up. There's a little line, that median line, that runs the entire length of the bait. And you can see it on both sides. So what we want to do is get this taped down to where that won't move on that medial line. And we'll go back and get the uh, this little spot right here. But first and foremost, you want that taped down where it should be taped down, right on this line. Work with the straight edge of your tape as well. Uh, this is the tedious part, and it's probably the part that I'm going to spend the most time on is getting this tape right on these Whopper Poppers. Because like I said, it is a very time-consuming process, and it takes about 15 to 20 minutes just to tape down one Whopper Plopper. Now we've got our Whopper Plopper emblem covered up so that we can pull that tape and expose it later. So we've got that done. We've got our eyes done. We have this taped up properly all the way around. This is now stationary. This isn't going to spin while you're painting it. That's what you want. And we're ready to put some paint on there. Let's go into the workshop. Now we're ready for the next step. The next step is, number one, determining what pattern we're going to put on this. Number two is applying the pattern. So I think uh, we've got a few to get through. Actually, we've got a lot to get through, but for this particular video, uh, we're going to use a craw pattern, and it's going to be hand-cut stencil. We've got all the stencil pieces in place. Now, we already have a white prime on this. This is the powder pattern. Um, River to Sea, Whopper Plopper in a 110. So we already have a base. Now, yes, it's been clear coated. That's not going to have any effect on repainting. Um, we don't need to do any sanding or roughing. A lot of people do. I don't. Um, KBS is very good and it seals very well. So the paint's going to hold to this and then we're going to seal it again after that. I'm going to show you the sealing process on these two because that's a little bit tricky if you're not used to doing moving parts pieces on Whopper Ploppers and sealing them. Um, this is probably a good video for you guys to watch. So let's get to it. Alright, we are going to do a crawl pattern. So the first of this is going to be a red. And I'm just going to kind of go over this in a random pattern. And there's always a method to the madness. So we have two of the same, and we're getting ready to lay in the Ozark green and a little bit of orange. We're going to model some orange into this as well. And once we put the pattern together, you'll understand the method to my madness. Ozark green into our cup, and when I say Ozark green, start with a leaf green. It's Createx transparent leaf green, and I've added a little bit of Wicked detailed burnt umber and a medium createx transparent gray and that's going to darken it up just enough to where it's going to look a little bit more like a, an olive drab uh, like uh, like an army green it's not going to be exactly a leaf green leaf green is a much brighter color we want this a little bit more subdued uh, because we want to mimic 
the Ozark type crawl. And when when I say Ozark, it, it's probably a crawl that you'll see in a pre-molt condition. Um, it's that greenish, orange, red tinged. Uh, it's going to have some white dots on it as well. Um, they'll feed fairly heavily before they molt. And when they molt, sometimes uh, even all the way up into the Illinois area, you're going to see a little bit of blue on the underside of them and a little bit more of a sand color. Uh, this is just your standard run-of-the-mill Ozark crawl. All we're doing is pretty much just filling in the area and blending because I haven't heat set. I generally will not heat set until I'm ready to start doing an overlay, a pattern overlay. So all I'm doing here is just filling in the blanks. And we've got one more color to add to this. I've got my pressure on about 20, roughly. But I'm not using a whole lot of pressure when I press down on the trigger. All right, down to our last color. This time it's going to be a much easier blend along the bottom. And you can probably blend into the back as well. I've done a quick heat set on both of these, so I do have dry paint that we're working with now. Like I said, I used hand cut stencils. Uh, I prefer to use it that way. Number one, it's uh, going to be a pattern that nobody else is really using, um, and, unless they cut them exactly the way that I do, but usually that doesn't happen. So the first thing that we're going to do is put the collar on. Uh, if you notice, those pictures right over there. Um, these crawfish have collars around their head before they have the segmented pieces on their body. So the first thing you want to do is put on this collar. I've turned my pressure way, way back. We're running between 5 and 10. See, there we go. The next piece that we're going to want is the tops, and we always do the tops first because it's much easier to line up your side shading if you have the tops of these. And we're going to go on the tail, and the trick to these stencils is that you want to airbrush on to the stencil and let the mist fall back so that you have a very distinct edge. If you spray heavily off of this, you want to aim for the edge of this, but if you spray heavily off of this, it's basically going to look like a, a muddy mess. So that's another trick that you guys can use. And then you just want to keep that lined up. You don't need many. I've seen a lot of people try and do like five, six, seven lines. You really only need two or three. And that's going to give it a distinct pattern. Give it a little shading there. I'm going to do it one more. There we go. If you guys are noticing, primarily I'm spraying the back of this card, and then you can see how that pattern looks. And it's got, I've got enough down on the sides to where I'm going to be able to line up when I go to do these sides. It's going to line up a lot better for me. It's much, much easier to get a, a good detail in. Next part is going to be the sides. And you can see that we've already come down a good ways. We want to continue the line in the same direction. And then we 
kind of just want to work around the eye on this last part. You can see that I'm on the inside. I am going to flip this to where you'll understand what I mean in a second. When we did the collar, the spray is on this side of the collar and everything else is on the opposite side. Really doesn't make a huge difference. Uh, it might annoy some people. It does not annoy me in the in the least. So, And then basically this rounded piece that I've cut, just follow the edges. Come right down and do the same with the next. And again, make sure you're primarily spraying the, the cutout or the stencil itself and letting the mist shade the edges. Now this last one, we've got a little bit longer of a distance between these two pieces, so we're just going to come down a little bit further, and I do have a wider one on here that we're going to use for this last piece. You just want to make sure you match that up on the other side. And remember to use your longer. You want to get it as matched up as you can. And now, one last little piece here. Go back to our short edge. how pretty that is. Flip this from this side, dried it off, now I'm using this side. And remember we want to come at the same angle, just continue the angle that's on there. Just line that up. top one isn't quite as critical because we want to come around that eye. Just make that hook there. Kind of hook that around. Get that in. Now we're going to come down and do the exact same thing in a mirror image that we did on the other side. I'm barely pressing down on the trigger on this, you guys. You don't need to do a hard stream of paint on detail. Ever. Ever, ever. Nice light detail. And that edge is, don't forget, we're going to use our long piece on the back end like we did on the other side. I just want to come down. one more little piece on the edge. Now there are a lot of really cool stencils out there that you guys can use. Russ Allen makes stencils. Jonas Summer makes stencils. Art Tools has stencils, although I haven't seen them in an actual craw pattern for fish lures, fishing lures. Um, I cut my own. And as you can see, I use the um, the material that comes inside treble hooks, feathered treble hooks, um, VMCs, the Bill Lewis set locks are real good, and that's just the cardboard backing that comes inside. I try and recycle whenever I can, and that's just a great way to do it. All right, we are on the last part of the stencil piece. And for this, I'm just going to use this little piece right here.
And maybe one more just at the tip of the chin of this bait. All right, I've backed the camera out just a little bit because the, uh, the next step in this is going to be adding our splatter effect to this crawfish. I still have a little bit of black left in the chamber. I try not to waste anything. And I'm going to flick this excess paint off onto the same thing that we were blotting the stencils with. And we're just going to employ a little, little flick technique. You can see that I've covered the area because I do have a lot of blanks left that are out that need to get painted here, so we don't want to cover them with splatter, especially before we've painted them, if it's unnecessary. If it were baits that I was going to add a splatter pattern to, then it wouldn't be so bad, but pretty much all we're doing, and the reason that we're doing this, adding a little bit of splatter, is to make it look as natural as possible. And this does help. Just want to get a little bit of the underside, so we're going to take our, there we go, take the excess that's already on the blotter paper lay that right in just a little you don't want to go crazy crazy with it just kind of do enough to make it noticeable all right there's the one Go ahead and do this other side here. Guys, come on now. They got to be right where I am. Most of the time, that's flattering. Sometimes, when I'm out here working at the bench, not so much. They're good dogs. Love them very much. They're just young. They love to play. And they, they put up with me working out here as many hours as I do. So I can't fault them for wanting to play a little bit. It's crappy outside. It's cold. It's kind of windy. I wish it would snow. Unfortunately, it's not snowing. It's just raw. Okay, we're doing pretty good. We're just about done with our splatter effect here. Just finish a little bit left up here on the underside of this bait. And um, voila. Regarding the splatter technique that I use, what kind of brush I use. Um, nothing super special to this. Let me get the light a little bit better for you. I like a square tip, and it's got to be a stiff bristle flat, real thin, and then wider, okay? And the reason that I like that, and, and when, I, when I hold the brush, I'm holding the brush about like this, and I'm flicking on the metal head part of the brush, and I'm flicking about four to five inches away from the bait. You don't want to be right up on it, because if you flick too hard, you're going to smash the top of this paintbrush into the bait, and it's going to be a mess, and you don't want that. So hold it back about that far. Again, four to five inches is perfect, maybe even six inches. And then just flick it with your finger as hard as you can against that bait. Now I went ahead and heat set this off camera for you guys. But now we're going to be on the, this is the last piece to the painting part of the jigsaw puzzle of this Whopper Plopper. And then after we're finished the detail, um, the next part of it, is going to be clear coating and a lot of people have asked me and that's one of the reasons that I did this I know I went ahead and I'm spraying the whole thing so I showed you a crawl pattern but I get asked a lot how to 
clear coat these. And that's going to be the last thing we show you guys. Now, since I've already heat set this, I've got some opaque white and a detail brush. And because crawfish, for the most time of their life, on their hard shell, pre molt and post molt have little raised dots on their shells. So what I like to do is just give this a random pattern and then come back and do the same thing along the top. all the way back to the back. Okay. What that's going to do, that's going to add a lot of natural looking detail to this already natural looking pattern. And you can see now why I sprayed the base colors in the manner that I did. Because once you get that pattern on, once you get these shading stencils together, really pops going to give these a quick heat set and then we're going to clear coat. Now we're at the point in the process where we're getting ready to clear coat. All the tape is off. You can see those beautiful river to sea eyes. Now how do you think they put that in there? How do you think they get the logo on those eyes? John from Jettison Lure Eyes and, uh, and Brian from Dinger, you guys can't cheat. No telling. But leave me a comment in the section below. I want to know how you guys think that they put that logo in there. Now those of you that have worked with lures for a long time and you guys hang your baits instead of putting them on a wheel, you know that most of the time you hang them nose up, tail down. You cannot do that with a whopper plopper because of the spinning part in the back of the bait. You have to hang it like this. So the best thing to do is to take your hanging wire and uh, I'll show you guys what I use for hanging wire It's basically just a 17 pound picture hanging wire crimp it and we're going to dip the top part after we've brushed on our clear coat right here hold this in place Brush this, get that tail. Don't put a ton of excess on there because this rubber tail behaves a whole lot differently than the rest of this does. There we go. Just get it even. Make sure it doesn't gob up. You don't want blotches of clear coat on your tail because that will affect how it swims also. Just just enough to coat it. You don't need a ton of, of clear coat on this brush folks. You just don't. Now we're ready to put on our wire, crimp it, hold just the tip steady, nice and slow kind of turn that bait make sure that you don't have excess clear coat it's gotten up in the top let gravity do its thing like I said slow and steady wins the race with this one folks and 
and then add our drip wire to the nose eyelet. There we go. Just bring it over and let it hang. And the only other thing that I want you guys to do with this is after about 20 minutes, once initially it has dried, come over and lift the tail up just to make sure that your spinning mechanism hasn't stuck together, that your two pieces, which is why a lot of folks put a little piece of wire or rubber band or something in between, just keep those two separate. Just be really careful if you don't do that. And I've done enough of these to where I don't I need that extra step. Um, but if you're just doing this for the first time, I might want to recommend to you guys to add that in because these two pieces do separate enough to where you can get that little piece of wire in between there. It will help in the long run if you're just starting out. Now we're just going to let it do its thing and we're going to show off the baits here when it dries first thing in the morning. Alright folks, well there we have it. This is our whopper plopper. No issues with the tail. Free spinning. And the brushed looks every bit as good as the dipped. You just have to make sure that you're doing even brush strokes and that you don't get any globs of clear coat anywhere on the bait. Same with this one. No issues with the tail there either. No problems at all. Thanks for hanging out with me, ladies and gents. Until we meet again, happy casting. Happy New Year from Jekyll Bates. If you guys have any questions, leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. If you guys also have any tips on how you guys paint and clear whopper ploppers, I'd love to hear them in the comment section. Cheers. <laughs>